have a good Christmas? Good. I know we sure did at our house. Um, today we are going to do a standalone end of the year message called Hindsight, Looking Back to Move Forward. And this end of the year message leads us to reflect on all that God has done over the last 12 months uh, here at Life and in your lives. Uh, we want to remember God's work in our family, in our community here at Life. And uh, we want to remember all of the ways that uh, we have responded to God in whatever it is, uh, worship and uh, baptism and discipleship and everything else that has happened. Uh, the big idea that we want to get across, if you're taking notes and, and this is the one thing you're going to grab onto, the big idea is that God has given his people a joyful task of actively remembering what he has done for us and through us. Because it is a chance to celebrate and to give thanks and to teach our children. So our challenge for today is to realize and recognize specifically where we have been changed in this past year by God's grace in both challenging, anybody faced any challenges this year? <laughs> and joyful ways, remembering these things that have happened, they will empower us to move into the future. And that's, that's what we want, right? You don't want to go through struggles and go through bad things and, and things that, that beat you down. And then on the other end of it, you haven't learned anything or gained anything or come through with any new insights or, or, or whatever, life lessons. That would, that would make all of that suffering pointless, right? And so today we have an example of Israel doing this exact thing. In, in our main scripture for today, and it's Deuteronomy 11, 1 through 7, and then we'll skip to verses 18 and 20, uh, 18 through 20, and I want to read that whole thing. It's a little bit, and there's some, some crazy names and things, but just hang with me. Um, it will be on the screens, I believe, so uh, follow along. It says, you shall love the Lord your God, therefore, and keep his charge, his decrees, his ordinances, and his commandments always. Remember today that it was not your children who have not known or seen the, uh, the, the discipline of the Lord your God, but it is you who must acknowledge his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arm his signs and his deeds that he did in Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land, what he did to the Egyptian army, to their horses and chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued you so that the Lord has destroyed them to this day, what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did uh, to Datham, and uh, Abram, sons of Eliab, son of Reuben, how uh, in the midst of all Israel, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up along with their households, their tents, and every living being in their company. For it is your own eyes that have seen every great deed that the Lord did. And then skipping to verse 18, it says, You shall put these words of mine in your heart and soul, and you shall bind them as a sign to your hand and fix as an, them as an emblem on your forehead. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates." This is God telling Israel, hey, you guys were there. You saw it with your own eyes, what I did for you. But people in the future are going to forget about this stuff. They weren't there to see it. They weren't there to hear it. They weren't there to experience it. And if they are going to be blessed by the things that you have gone through, you have to let them know. You have to tell them what I did for you. And so that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about how we have experienced some very important things. God has brought us through stuff. God has given us many victories. But the people that we're around and our children and our children's children, they're not going to know about that stuff. They didn't see it. They didn't hear it. They didn't experience it. So it's our job to pass that along. 
Now, according to Strong's uh, Hebrew lexicon, in Deuteronomy, yada is translated here as consider, when the Lord is commanding them to consider the things that he's done. It is used 43 times, often as a command for God's people to reflect upon, teach, and remember, and know all that God has done. God's instructions demonstrate that this command is to be taken very seriously. He's not telling them to remember so they can, they can just uh, have a pleasant memory. He's saying remember with purpose. This is for a reason. Remember for yourself, but also for others. They are to put this knowledge not only in their heart and soul, but on their hands, in front of their eyes, on their gates, on their doorposts. He's saying, remember this as often as possible in as many ways as possible. In other words, God wants us to consider the things he has done and what he has taught us all of the time. He wants us to constantly be remembering all of the things that he has done to us and through us. In 1 Samuel 7, 12, we see the prophet Samuel, and he's taking this commandment seriously himself. Uh, when God heard the people's cries for deliverance, Samuel erects this stone of remembrance. And uh, you've heard of this in other places of the Bible as well. The verse says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen, and he named it Ebenezer saying, till now the Lord has helped us. You see, building an altar was a symbol of worship that also acted as a powerful reminder of what God had commanded, how the people had responded to God at that time, and how God blessed or discipled them as a result. In every case, the memory was instructive not only to that community, but he was saying to the generations to come. And so he set up this reminder stone, and I apologize, I meant to bring some bricks to stack up so you'd have a visual, but if we close our eyes and we imagine real hard, we can see a rock, right? <laughs> I was going to try to carry one in from outside, but it's too heavy. Um, but they put that rock there so that every time they saw that rock, they would remember that rock was put there because God did this. And then a kid would say, why is that rock there? And they would say, that rock is there because a few years ago we were going through this and God did this. And they would, they would uh, send that message on generation to generation. Some versions of the beloved hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, include a reference to this story in the second verse. It says, Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. This used to be something that we were taught to remember things, to share things. I, I'm in college again for the 50th time, and uh, I'm doing all Zoom classes, and uh, somebody brought up the fact that uh, churches back in the day used to have uh, testimony time often. I remember Sunday nights were usually the, the time where people would, would uh, have testimonies. And uh, they were talking about all the memories. And uh, someone brought up the fact that, you know, it was during this time that people were encouraged because they would hear people stand up and say, this is what was going on in my life. And I prayed, and this is what God did for me. Now, we also talked about, this is an asterisk, by the way, we also talked about how it turned into uh, something else, <laughs> and that's probably why it got shut down in a lot of places. But, but that was the purpose when it was, uh, when it was started, was to hear about what God was doing in other people's lives so that we could know about it, reflect on it, remember it, thank God, celebrate, and then we could pass those testimonies on to other people. 
Well, these lines express so well the purpose of tangible signs, remembering God's work in our lives and communities, in looking behind at what God has done, past tense, we find the courage for hope of what's going on in the future. If we hear about how God has taken care of us in the, in the past, that gives us hope to know that he's going to be faithful in times to come. That's why it's so important. Almost every conceivable publication this time of year, uh, whether it's a media outlet or a website or a magazine, they have a year in review, right? They talk about what were the best movies of this past year, what were the best songs, uh, what were the best restaurants to eat at, or, or whatever it is. And uh, this, this is something that we should be doing when it comes to the things that God has done in our life. We should be making, what are the top 10 lists? You should write this down, right? <laughs> there is an inherent value in taking a moment to pause and reflect on where we have been to remember all that we have recently experienced, whether it's individually or as a family or as a church family in our lives. Because even though we've gone through rough times, we've also come through some rough times. And even though we've had some struggles, we've overcome some things in our lives. And that's what we need to remember. Because when you're in the midst of the storm, you never think it's going to end, right? <laughs> when you're in the darkest dark of the night, that dawn could never come faster, right? We get discouraged. But if we look back and we say, you know what, though? I've made it through many a dark night. I've made it through many a violent storm. And that gives us hope for the future. How much truer is this for the community of God? How much is truer is this for our church? We have a big group of people here today that can share multiple things each. And then it's not just, oh, well, God did that one thing for me. Yeah, but you know what he did for your brother and your sister and all these people sitting here? Hundreds of things. And so as a congregation, God has done many things for us despite all the added challenges and all the added struggles that we went through with everything that's going on in the world for the last actually couple of years, not just this past year. We have experienced all kinds of great things. We've experienced people giving their life to the Lord or, or rededicating their life to the Lord. We've had many baptisms in water, which is something that a, a lot of churches have abandoned. <laughs> but we have people making public professions of their faith for the very first time, saying, you know what, I've made a commitment to live for the Lord, and I want the world to know. That's awesome. That's something that, you know, we shouldn't just... Uh, go out on the back patio and watch that happen, and then let that memory go away. We should build a monument. We should build an altar of some sort to remember that and to encourage other people and to take that forward. We've had graduations and we've had service projects and funerals and weddings, and uh, we've had all types of ministry and missions projects and all kinds of celebrations. We can't let those things just fade away. We need to celebrate those and reflect on those so that they affect where we're headed from here. We must teach the children and youth in our congregation specifically how God has worked for years and for decades to bring these things about. We need to focus on how God has been faithful to us over and over and over again. We need to find more and more ways to make this known. Because how many of you know that it's not terribly practical for us to go out and, and stack some bricks <laughs> or to put a rock? You know what, though? It might be more practical than you think, especially if your family specifically has gone through something. There's no reason why you can't put a rock in your front yard or plant a tree specifically to remember something every time you look out, every time you walk up that driveway and you see that rock in your front yard and you think, you know what? There's a reason that rock is there. It's because our family went through this horrible struggle. We lost somebody. We did this, whatever it is, and God was faithful. God brought us through. You know what? There used to be uh, a little cacti right there, <laughs> and now there's this palm tree, 
and there's a reason. We planted that palm tree because God was faithful. But there's all sorts of other things that we can do, and we need to be creative, and we need to come up with some ways to make that happen. We need to find more and more ways to make it known that till now, God has helped us, just like Samuel said. We need to reflect on all the things that God has done over the last 12 months. And, and uh, if we haven't done a good job before that, we, we can go back and we can share some things that maybe he did a while ago. We need to remember God's work in our community and our church family as well, all of the things that we, we rattled off before. God has given his people the joyful task. It should be a joyful task of actively remembering what he has done for us and through us. This is a chance to celebrate, to give thanks, and to teach our children. When we come together every Sunday morning to worship, it is a celebration. We're not just singing some words up on the screen, you know, going through the motions. We should be thinking about what we're singing about. If we're singing about praising the Lord, why? Why are we praising the Lord? Think of something specifically. Think of something that God has done for you or your family or, or this church. And when you say, Lord, I lift your name on high, or I praise you, or hallelujah, you shouldn't just be saying those words. You should be saying them for a reason. Because in your mind, you're thinking, God did this for me. He is worthy of my praise. He is worthy of my worship because he brought us through, because he did this, because he used me to do this, whatever it is. That's why we come together, to praise God, but not just going through the motions, but for a reason. God has given his people the joyful task of actively remembering what he has done for and through us. It is a chance to celebrate, to give thanks, and to teach our children. Because how many of you know that if your children hear you singing, or hear you say praise God, or hear you say hallelujah, they're going to ask, why? Because they say why a lot. <laughs> but that gives you this amazing opportunity to say, here's why. I'm saying hallelujah, I'm saying praise God, I'm saying amen, because you don't know this, but this happened to our family, or this happened to me, and God was faithful. He helped us. We have been changed this past year by God's grace in both challenging and joyful ways. Remembering these things will empower us to move into the future. I challenge you right now to build a monument, an Ebenezer, as it was called. Whatever that might look like, it might be physical, it might be a rock, it might be a tree, or it could be something digital. We live in a crazy age where there's all kinds of stuff we can do. It could be a list that you type up and print out and paste on your refrigerator. It could be a journal that you keep. And each week, at the end of the week, you look back at those days and you think, what did God do for me or through me? And then make sure you share that with someone else. It could be a photo. It could be a painting. If you're artistic, you could paint something that represents something that God brought you through or something that he used you in, and you could put that up in your house or you could hang it in the garage, whatever. But every time you walk past it, every time you see it, you'll remember what God did. Look back through your Facebook posts. If you're younger, Instagram. <laughs> but whatever it is, whatever works for you, whatever enables you to reflect and remember and pass on what God has done to and through you, that's what we need to do. Amen? You guys with me? Sound like a plan? Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for this amazing opportunity to come here with my brothers and sisters, to worship you, to lift you up for all of the things, to praise you for your faithfulness, to, to lift you up and thank you for all that you've done to us and through us. And I just pray, Lord God, that we'll find 
better ways, more intentional ways, creative ways to set up things in our lives as remembrances, as Ebenezer's, so that every time we see that thing or every time we walk through that or sing it or, or whatever it is, Lord God, that we'll remember your faithfulness and what has happened in the past will give us hope for the future. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. You're an amazing God. In Jesus' name, amen.